the riddle of the Sphinx. The chart immediately below shows the Sphinx as it stands today. The Sphinx in Jiza. Jiza equals Yiza equals as he equals as he equals Oz, faces east, towards the rising sun, and in times past, the rising of the constellation Leo. Leo equals L equals oil signifying the religious importance of black gold, that drives the commercial engine of the 3D realm. The Sphinx of Jiza is a symbol of the Sunday however, in ancient Greece, their Sphinx, which was based on the Sphinx of Jiza, was portrayed as a woman, with breasts, eagle's wings, and a serpent tail. The breasts refer to the flood of the moon goddess, and coincides with the mythology of the Milky Way. The eagle's wings symbolize the wings of the phoenix bird which rises from the ashes. The serpent's tail suggests the windy Nile River, the sacrifice and regeneration provided annually by the flooding of the Nile, July 4th. The term sacrifice and regeneration suggesting death and resurrection. The sphinx is androgynous. A male and female symbol of death and resurrection. A symbol of the sun and of the moon. Once again, the symbol of the sun and moon, is contained in the name of Solomon. The sun and moon refer to the Saviour Sun, and the Mother Moon. This further extends to the notion of the virgin birth of the Saviour Sun, where countless messiahs throughout our illusory history, were said to have been virgin born, indicating the lack of corruption and defilement and suggesting the supreme nature of this mythological entity. One of the riddles relating to the Sphinx of Giza, is that there were two sisters. One sister gave birth to her sister, who in return gave birth to her sister. The answer was, the day is one sister, who gave birth to the night, who is the other sister. This is simply a reference to the sun and moon, the light of the day and the light of the night. Which again, is just referring to Solomon and the Temple of Light. The Lion on the Move, about the year 1450 BC, the Pharaoh at that most three was in power. This is said to be the period of illusory time that the exodus from Egypt occurred under the leadership of Moses. Thutmose equals thought Moses, the pharaoh of Thutmose is again a subliminal suggesting the thoughts, or the musings of Moses, which means to be drawn from the water. The association here is water currents, and the thought process, or electrical currents, which are now moving out of Egypt to manipulate reality, and to establish the 3D life experience into the fiasco we witness in our present illusory time period. Thutmose is simply a term referring to the thought process and the father of all gods, the creator god, called Thoth. The number 3, in the name Thutmose 3, is a subliminal for the number 111 in Roman numerals. 111. As shown previously on this site, the number 11 is death, and the number 111,111,111 by 111 111,111,111 equals 1234567898765432121. In other words, all of creation, which is mathematically, and intellectually conjured up through hypnosis, is manifested by the number 111. Counting this number 111,111,111 multiplied by 111,111,111 equals 9 sets of 11, or 9-11, the day relating to the World Trade Center attack and the first day of creation according to the religions of the children of Abraham. As Moses, the Lion King, the Sphinx moved out of Egypt, the Israelites wandered for 40 years in the wilderness of sin. The religious manipulation and hypnotic suggestion here is, don't get lost in sin. As the Israelites wandered, two pillars followed them. A pillar of smoke by day, and a pillar of fire by night. These two pillars, are of course, the legs of the Lion King, the Sphinx of Giza, who is now on the move. Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, the sun and moon, in the wilderness of sin. Moses and the Israelites camped near Mount Sinai also called Mount Horeb. The name Sinai is derived from the Sumerian moon goddess called Sin, and therefore is a name referring to the moon and to the flood. The sand of the wilderness of Sin, is also referring to the sand of the sea, or the flood of the mother moon goddess. This will be significant, from a symbolic perspective as the information on this page is considered. The name Horeb means glowing heat, and meant to refer to the sun. It's upon this mountain that Moses received the Ten Commandments on two stone tablets. These two tablets are symbolic of the Lion King's legs, or subliminally legs equals silosly, as in to kill. The Ten Commandments are designed to instill guilt, fear, confusion, and to kill any grasp of reality that might be apparent to the illusory human being. The number 10 referring to the intensity of this 3D life experience, where the whole purpose is to live, simply to die. Mount Sinai, Horeb is obviously just another subliminal, and suggestion relating to the Sphinx of Egypt and to Solomon's Temple which is the sun and the moon. 
The importance of this will be obvious as the reader progresses through this page. The Temple of Domes, after Moses and the Israelites wandered in the wilderness of Sin, or the wilderness of the moon, they eventually crossed the Jordan River and into the Promised Land. Of course, Moses could not enter, but merely observed the Promised Land from across the Jordan. Eventually, the Israelites set about building Solomon's Temple, on a hill called Mount Moriah. Supposedly, this was the site of the threshing floor that Abraham purchased and where it's said that he was to sacrifice his son, his only son Isaac, unto the Lord. Today, Mount Moriah is the site of the Temple Mount, or the Noble Sanctuary, where Solomon's Temple is to have been situated. Some accounts claim that the Temple was located between the Alexa Mosque at the southern edge of the Noble Sanctuary, and some claim that the Holy of Holies was actually located beneath what is today, the Dome of the Rock. Still others claim that the Temple was located exactly opposite the Golden Gate, which would be a few yards north of the Dome of the Rock. Wherever the temple is supposed to have been located is irrelevant when it becomes obvious that Solomon's temple keeps morphing from one form to another, and has been doing so since the conjuring began in Babylon and ancient Sumeria. On the chart immediately below, the shape of Solomon's temple is now reflected with the dome over the dome of the rock, and the dome over the Alexa Mosque. These are the two pillars of Solomon's temple, which always refer to the sun and the moon. Today, these two domes form Solomon's temple after its destruction by the armies of Babylon, and the eventual destruction of Herod's temple, the second temple on the Temple Mount, by the armies of Rome, in 70 AD. This time around Solomon's temple took on the form of the Dome of the Rock with its gold dome, symbolic of the sun, and the day. The Dome of the Rock is an Islamic shrine, and covers the foundation stone that it is said, that Muhammad ascended up to the seventh heaven on his magic horse called al -Barak. This foundation stone is shown on P.19 of this site, and is the shape of the 11 Western United States. Not only the shape of the 11 Western States, but the detail matches the topography of the 11 Western States almost perfectly, except for a yet to occur future event which will then coincide with the detailed topography of the foundation stone. The gold dome of the Dome of the Rock is the G pillar of Solomon's Temple. Symbolic of the pillar of Gikan, or Jikin, or Joaquin, San Joaquin Valley, in Spanish. This dome coincides with the state of California, the Golden State, and the other ten western states, that together form one sacrifice pillar of the long-awaited Temple of Solomon, that has been suggested, subliminally, also called prophecy, to be established in the Day of Judgment of the Lord. Of course, those waiting for the Temple of the Lord, the Temple of Solomon, to be built as in the days of old, are in a deep hypnotic trance state. Because of this hypnosis, they're unable to grasp the reality of how Solomon's Temple is the Moon Goddess, and the Sun God, and how together, they are symbolized in the Great Sphinx of Giza in Egypt. The second pillar of Solomon's temple is the Alexa Mosque. The name Alexa means the furthest mosque in accordance to Mecca. As previously noted on this site, Alexa simply is a play on words, and means Alaska. This is the furthest that any mosque could symbolically be from Mecca. For Mecca is 39 degrees east and the vertical border of Alaska is 141 degrees west. 39 degrees plus 141 degrees totals 180 degrees, or, halfway around the world. It is not possible, symbolically, to be farther away from Mecca. Therefore, the Alexa Mosque on the Noble Sanctuary, Temple Mount site, is actually symbolic of the state of Alaska, the 50th state to join the Union. The number 50 symbolizing sacrifice, 5, with intensity, 0, 0 equals eros equals eros or erotic sexual love, regeneration. The Alexa Mosque is the second pillar, the B pillar of Boaz, to be established in Solomon's temple in which the judgment day of the Lord will unfold. The dome on the Alexa Mosque is black, symbolic of the night, and the moon, and of death. Together, the dome of the rock and the Alexa Mosque form Solomon's temple. Interestingly, these two structures have experienced earthquakes throughout their illusory history, and two of the most active earthquake regions in the world are those of the 11 western states and the state of Alaska. Alaska and the 11 Western United States symbolically represent the location that the final judgment of God will be delivered to the world. These geographic locations are on the Pacific Ocean, that symbolically identifies with Jerusalem, the Sea of Peace, CP.16 of this site, and adjacent to Mexico equals Mejdo, where the Battle of Armageddon is predetermined to rage as the Judgment Day unfolds. The drug wars, with 30,000 dead since 2006, and the increasing violence and blood is just the beginning of what's to come. Most symbolic of all, Sarah Palin is not going away. 
Sarah equals Horus equals Horus equals Rose equals Rose and Palin equals Pelian or P the 16th letter symbolic of Lincoln, and Lian equals Lion. Sarah Palin is a type of the Sphinx, the Moon Goddess. The Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones, the Indiana Jones movies have implanted the necessary subliminals to further perpetuate the myth of the Judgment Day of God. The Temple of Doom is simply legitimizing within our subconscious mind, that Solomon's Temple is the Temple of Domes. This Temple of Domes, is in turn the 11 western states and the state of Alaska, which are subliminally suggested to be doomed. Thereby establishing our illusory 3D reality to include such a fabricated notion, and as a result, the trance state will experience the emotional horror associated with this suggestion. Of course, to become emotionally detached to such a concept, and to refocus on reality and our original state of being, gives us the freedom and power to escape the emotional horror intended to manipulate our 3D illusory experience. The chart immediately below shows the two domes of Solomon's temple. The domes equates to the word domes des, or doomsday, as well as symbolizing the horizon and the rising sun. This then relates to the state of Arizona, which is an anagram for Oriens, or Orion, which is the fish god Orion, the royal lion, the Lion King. The state of Arizona has as its capital, the city of Phoenix, the bird that rises from the ashes. This is the symbolism, the bird and the fish, that we are now witnessing as thousands of birds are falling from the sky and millions of fish are dying. Of course, this has always gone on to some degree or another, but what's different this time, is that the media, the internet, and social networks, are spreading the subliminal on behalf of the Luciferian mindset to assist in establishing the illusory reality, that the phoenix bird is being destroyed, and about to be reborn.